Well, my name's Louise Savage. Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you have visited me before and a very warm welcome if you're watching me for the first time with my musings. Um, so uh, this month's prompt, no, yes, this month, no, last month, no, this month, no, last month. <laughs> I don't know. April's prompt. It's now May. April's prompt was um, to read a book that was set in your favourite city. Um, and I could not resist setting, read, setting a book, reading a book. Oh, this is going well. Uh, reading a book that is set in Rome, which probably is my favourite city, um, especially at this time of year. Um, so I picked up a while ago um, Elizabeth Buchan's Two Women in Rome. Um, I thought, well, it's got it on the front. I loved the cover. That is very, very, that cover really sums up Rome for me. The curved street and the, the, the colours and, you know, the terracottas and the, so I thought, well, this is good. Um, I've never read anything by Elizabeth Buchan before. Um, and I wasn't even aware that she's uh, apparently a, a romantic fiction specialist. Um, that's her genre, but um, there we are. I only found out for, through doing a bit of dabbling on the internet. Um, so this is her most recent book. I think she's she's getting on now. I think she's been writing for quite some time. Um, certainly, I was aware of her as a, a writer when I was a lot younger, uh, or at least aware of her name. Saw her book on on people's shelves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, books. Um, anyway, so um, just to sort of give you a flavour of the narrative. Um, Nina is the, no, Lottie is the uh, focal character for the novel. She's newly married to Tom. They live in a flat in Trastevere in um, Rome, a place that I've been lucky enough to visit many, many times. Um, and uh, she she's come from quite a difficult um, background um, and she is an archivist. Well, what's not to like about that? I love a book where you're rummaging around in, in old archives. Um, and so she has this job. She's she's come over to Rome to be with him, to be with Tom. And she's taken this job as um, an archivist at the S. Patriati, which is, um, I think, a sort of organisation that looks at um, the uh, lives of, of, you know, people who are no longer exist. Um, so she uh, is given this box to look through in the archives and the box is labelled Nina Lawrence and so we then get transported into the story of Nina Lawrence and Lottie spends the novel unpicking Nina's story because Nina was um, brutally murdered in a very sort of um, shady place down by the River Tiber and her murder was never properly, wasn't investigated. Nobody was ever, um, nobody ever came to justice um, after the murder. And it took place in the 1970s, I want to say 1978. Um, so it's a, you know, I love a novel that spans different time periods. So you're zigzagging between um, the world, the, the sort of present day world of, of Lottie in um, Newly Married in Rome and then you're, you're zigzagging back to the 1970s and Nina's story is really powerful. So as um, Lottie unpicks it, there's lots to do with um, art. There are a couple of paintings that become very important to the narrative, which I really enjoyed. Um, and I loved, you know, references to... Um, lots of different places in Rome that I could sort of conjure up in my head, the Via Giulia, etc, etc. Um, having said all of that, I found the novel quite disappointing in many ways. Um, I kept getting lot. you can see I'm still doing it, I kept getting Lottie and Nina mixed up. The, 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 their voices, for me, there was little distinction between them. Um, so when Lottie was narrating, I couldn't tell the difference between when she was and um, when Nina was, because a lot of the story is told through Nina's um, writing, her own writing. Um, so I found that a bit frustrating. I also, although personally it was nice to sort of travel around Rome and tramp the streets and so on, there was very little description of 
the city itself. Now, maybe that's, you know, my disappointment about that is because I picked this book up because I wanted to be in Rome. Um, and I think I wanted the, the, you know, the scenery to be painted for me and it, it just wasn't. Um, you know, Trastevere, where the, where the flat is, is such a, a sort of zingy, um, bohemian, um, also a bit touristy part of Rome. Uh, and yet I didn't, I didn't sense that if you were reading the novel and hadn't been there, you'd, you'd, you'd realise that. Um, you know, we kept, we kept ending up in the Piazza dei Fiori and places like that, but they weren't really, um, described. And I thought that was a, a missed opportunity. Um, I found, I sometimes found the topic shifts and the dialogue quite clunky. Um, so it's left me, you know, it's, it's a kind of game of two halves. And the, the other thing about it that, that, um, troubled me was that I, there weren't really many sort of twists for me because by the time the the twists arrived, I'd pretty much worked out what what they were. Um, so I, I suppose probably I found it a little bit cliched. I mean, she'd obviously done loads of research, um, you know, because there were lots of sort of intrigues to do with with the church, which I found really fascinating and I liked the fact that the themes of the novel were to do with trust and fidelity and and honesty and those kinds of things um but the research I was conscious when I was reading those passages they kind of didn't sort of sit within the narrative very comfortably um I'm very glad I've read it I'm I'm glad I've I've tried you know her writing I don't think I would rush back um to read one of her novels again but but I might you know it depends what the novel was um I mean she's you know she's been very well received she's won the Costa Costa Book Awards for example and I think possibly the Whitbread um so yeah just just really interesting so there we are that was it two women in Rome um you can tell because of my model earlier although this was my April read I'm actually recording this in May and I have actually just started my May um book so May's prompt is to read a novel that you have acquired either, I think, from a friend or from a secondhand bookshop. So the novel I've chosen um, is from a secondhand bookshop. It's by one of my favourite authors. It's been sitting on my shelf for quite a long time, but I haven't got round to reading yet. I'm not going to tell you what it is <laughs> until I uh, record my thoughts. I'm only about 50 pages in, but I am really enjoying it already. Anyway, there you go. So I hope, um, you know, if you've joined in with the reading prompts, I hope you've, uh, you're have you still enjoying it. I'd love to know what your April prompts were. I'd be very intrigued to find out what your May prompts are as well, but I fully understand if you don't want to share them because I'm being so coy about it. Anyway, um, I am off to see my sister this afternoon. So um, hope all's well with all of you out there. And um, this is just a quick little catch up about um, the Savage Reading Prompts for 2023. Take care, everybody. Bye.